Okay, let's move on to our final topic, and this is a brief discussion. Uh, we're going to look at pruning to increase fruit size and mitigate the negative effects of a heavy on crop. So pruning is like fertilization. You have to do it. If you're producing a tree crop, there's no way around it. Fertilizing, pruning. The goal is to get some additional bang for our pruning buck. We got to do it, but let's do it so we're making money from doing it and kind of reducing the cost of having to do it. So why do we prune? Well, we're pruning to control tree height, to facilitate harvest. We prune to keep the rows open so we can conduct other cultural management activities throughout the year. If you're on a slope, you should be raising your skirt so cold air drains through your orchard. And also so your sprinklers are not wetting your low-hanging fruit. There's no sense in giving disease organisms a chance to grow on your fruit. The most important reason we prune is to open the canopy for light penetration. No light, no flowers. You got to get that light into your tree, uniformly into your tree, in order to get good flowering. We prune to increase fruit size. In other words, in on-crop years, we take off some of the fruit. That helps the remaining fruit on the tree achieve size. We, we prune to maintain uniform annual yields. We want to establish a balance in the tree between bearing shoots and non-bearing shoots. So shoots that have mature fruit on them and flowers, those are your bearing shoots. And you need some green shoots, non-bearing shoots, to flower the next year. And unfortunately, when alternate bearing is initiated, we need to prune to mitigate the effects of the heavy on crop. So since we're pruning and talking about alternate bearing, I want to make sure that we all understand alternate bearing. So this is a quick alternate bearing 101. Climate events are the major factors that initiate alternate bearing. High temperatures this past year knocked a lot of the fruit, all the fruit off the tree and initiated an on bloom. So adverse climate conditions, freeze, lower high temperatures, drought because you're not irrigating properly. This reduces flowering, can kill the floral buds, or it causes excessive flower and fruit drop. That results in an off crop year that will be followed one to two years later, to, depending upon how severely damaged the trees are by an on crop. So if you have freeze damage, sometimes the trees don't recover for two years and then you get this huge bloom. It may surprise you that optimal conditions during flowering and fruit set, such that natural fruit thinning fails to occur, can cause alternate bearing. This results in an on crop that the following year will be an off crop. And I want to show you a little bit later in this presentation that holding the on crop on the tree for late harvest to squeeze out that little bit of extra growth in the fruit actually makes alternate bearing worse. So you really need to think strategically cost of losing that little bit of extra growth versus getting more crop the next year. So once alternate bearing is initiated by a climatic event, it's perpetuated, meaning that these on-off cycles keep going year after year due to the effect of crop load. Crop load is the number of fruit on the tree, and it's not the mature fruit that are causing alternate bearing, it's the young developing fruit. So in, if you set an off crop, the next year you're going to get an on bloom. If you set a heavy on crop, the next year you're going to get an off bloom. So it's these young fruit. And it's because these young fruit do four things to fruit trees. Fortunately for avocado growers, 
They only do three things. The first thing they do is they inhibit summer vegetative shoot growth. Remember I told you in avocado, 60 to 70% of the bloom is on those shoots. That's because in an off crop year, you get huge long summer shoots and at every node, you get a determinant floral shoot, highly successful in fluorescences. Okay. On an on-crop year, because you have fruit sitting on those shoots, they don't grow. And so all you get is a single terminal indeterminate floral shoot on some of them, not very many of them. Okay, and we're going to talk about that in one second. The next thing that the on-crop of setting fruit does is it inhibits floral development. It actually represses the transcription of genes that form the flower. Okay, that's devastating because it's hard to get around something that negative. The third thing it does is inhibit spring bud break. So those few viable flowers you have on the tree don't even grow out because the on-crop inhibits spring bud break. The good thing for avocado growers is, is that in pistachio and olive, the on-crop of fruit actually causes the abscission of the floral buds for next year's crop. I mean, they're gone. That doesn't happen in avocado, so we're very lucky. So we know why we're pruning, how do we prune? So bearing shoots, any shoot that's got a fruit on it, does not flower the next spring. So during an on-crop year, what do we have? The majority of all the shoots have fruit on them. So the majority of shoots do not produce any inflorescences the next year. Only those few non-bearing shoots of an on-crop tree flower at return bloom. Okay? So non-bearing shoots produce the next year's crop. In an off-crop year, the majority of shoots are non-bearing. You get a huge bloom. In an on-crop year, very few non-bearing shoots and off bloom. So this is a very important concept for how you prune an alternate bearing orchard. So now I'm going to give you a little quiz. I'm going to introduce you to growers A and growers B. Grower A has 750 fruit on his tree. Grower B's got 750 fruit on his tree. That's about 373 pounds per tree. Okay? Grower A produces an off bloom next year. Grower B produces another on bloom. Do you know why? The picture shows you. Right. Grower B has a lot of non bearing shoots. He pruned his tree so that he had a balance between bearing and non-bearing shoots. He worked at this over time. He did this by increasing the complexity of the tree. And so he has non-bearing shoots to bear flowers next year. Grower A has no complexity in his tree, very few non-bearing shoots, and so he produces an off-bloom and he hasn't pruned his tree well, so he's not going to have any flowers next year. Grower B got lots of flowers, and he's gone in and pruned his tree to create shoots that will bear the following year. So you prune to increase the complexity in your tree. Now, when do we prune? So the negative effects of that setting on crop of fruit on return bloom, bloom the next year, and yield are cumulative. As the young fruit develop over time from fruit set to harvest, the reduction in return bloom becomes progressively worse. This is another important concept for timing 
fruit thinning of on-crop trees by hand or chemical or by pruning. In this case, we're talking about pruning. So this is a phenology of the tree again. If you have an off-crop or if you prune an on-crop early or you harvest the crop early, or you do some fruit thinning very early in the season. Everything has got to happen before the middle of June. That's so that any non-bearing shoots that develop have time to mature and produce flowers the next year. So if we do this, we'll increase exponential fruit growth of the remaining fruit, we'll stimulate summer vegetative shoot growth and fall shoot growth, we will not have a negative effect on the development of the flowers at the level of the gene. Determinacy is when the flower bud becomes irreversibly committed to being a flower. And so we'll have an increase in what would have been an off bloom. Now, if you don't do anything until after um, when the summer vegetative shoot flush should have occurred, you lose your summer flush. So you've lost 60 to 70% of your bloom next year. Also, because you still got all that crop on the tree, fruit size is gonna be smaller when you harvest. And you're going to um, at least increase your fall shoot growth if you go late, and you will improve the commitment of the floral bud to being a flower. So you'll have some increase in bloom the next year, but not as much as if you did something early on. If you delay even further and don't do something about crop load of the on-crop year until the winter, you've lost your summer vegetative shoot flush, you've lost your fall shoot flush, so now 60, 70, 80% of your bloom. Your fruit size didn't have any chance to increase over what it was uh, if you didn't do any thinning. And this is too late to improve the commitment of the floral buds to be flowers. So your increase in bloom, the only thing you're gaining is you've increased spring bud break. That's all you're gaining. So you have to do something very early on in the season. And so I like spring. And spring has a number of advantages. You can prune in January or February before the on bloom, but you can't see your bloom. So you can't really see what are bearing shoots. Remember, bearing shoots have fruit on them, or they have inflorescences. So you can't really balance anything very well. The other thing is, is that of the fruit that you prune off, it may not be of legal maturity, so you can't sell it. If you wait at least to spring bloom, you can see your bloom, and for the most part, the fruit will have size, and they will have reached legal maturity, so you can sell them. I mean, I admit the market price might not be good, but you're getting money for those fruit and you're increasing your yield the next year. So you have to think in terms of what is the cost if I don't take those fruit off, okay? So you want to, you want to do your pruning for the reasons we discussed earlier on. You wanna create complexity, you wanna open up the canopy to let the light in, you want to control the size of the tree, you can't have trees growing into each other and shading each other. They can't be so tall, they're shading across the row. So you're, you're doing all the reasons that you're pruning and in the process, you're taking off some inflorescences and you're taking off some mature fruit. And so you're gradually over time bringing that tree back into balance. Do not attempt to correct alternate bearing in one spring. You will take off so many flowers, you'll have two off years in a row, okay? So you gotta do it gradually. Keep in mind what you're trying to achieve. The first slide's about why we're pruning. 
knowing that in taking off what you need to take off to create complexity and get light into your canopy, you're removing some inflorescences and you're removing some mature fruit and you're bringing the tree back into balance. Now, I promised I would show you what would happen if you left that on crop of fruit on the tree. So, we set an on crop. I leave it on the tree, I lose my summer shoots, lost 60 to 70% of my flowers. I lose my fall shoots, I lose another potential 10%. I inhibit floral gene expression, and so my flowers do not become committed to being flowers. They become vegetative growth. I inhibit spring bud break, and those fruit are still on there to inhibit summer vegetative shoot growth. Again, if you leave those fruit on into June, July, August, you're doing it to yourself all over again. No summer shoots, another 60 to 70% of your flowers lost. Okay, so get those fruit off. Make your life easy with making decisions about fertilization. Okay, so that's my advice. All right, let's summarize. Prune to maximize yield of commercially valuable sized fruit. So you want to maintain a balance between the number of fruit and the number of healthy leaves on the tree for energy production for larger fruit. So if you have an on bloom and you've lost a lot of the foliage from your tree, you're going to have to sacrifice some of your setting fruit or you're not going to have a good balance for good size. So you want to push some vegetative shoots, get them out there so they can supply photosynthate for the developing fruit. So definitely you want to prune. Maintain a balance between non-bearing and bearing shoots. So once you reestablish this balance, you want to prune to maintain it. Prune to create canopy complexity and get the light into the tree. Prune early. In an on-crop year, you want to prune early to increase non-bearing shoots for the summer. So you're, you're increasing shoots that will grow out of your pruning cuts. You do it early enough. If you do it in spring, they'll mature. And a proportion of them will contribute inflorescences the next year. Not all of them will flower, but a lot of them will. Prune early in off-crop years to get some of that mature on-crop off the tree. Or harvest early. Okay, if you're not going to prune every year, at least harvest those mature fruit and get them off the tree. Fertilize based on tree phenology and nutrient demand. You really only have to make serious decisions two times a year. Spring to support inflorescences, fruit set, and the mature fruit on the tree. Adjusting for on and off crops. Summer to support exponential fruit growth summer shoot growth, our return bloom, and the root flushes. And so if you have an on crop on the tree, you want to extend that fertilizer into September, October to help support the fruit so they'll continue under exponential fruit growth to help support vegetative shoot growth and that second root flush that occurs at the end of September, beginning of October. Do not use replacement fertilization, okay? Um, if you use replacement fertilization, then you look at what your on-crop took off and you put that back on the tree, you're over-fertilizing your off-crop. And if you look at the little bit your off-crop took off, then you're under-fertilizing your on-crop. So fertilize according to tree demand. Always look and say, what does my current crop need? What does my previous crop need? What do I need to do to make sure I'm going to have flowers next year? And then we always think about the roots last, and I did, I put them on here last, I'm guilty. You have to maintain healthy roots for uptake of water and nutrients. Use phosphorus acid to protect 
your root flushes, okay? I work for the University of California, so you use a phosphite fungicide, not a fertilizer, because you are protecting the roots from Phytophthora. Unless you're making a fertilizer decision, then you can use a fertilizer. When do we protect the root flushes? The first one is about the middle of July. So when your summer vegetative shoot flush is not growing anymore and the leaves are becoming fully expanded, that's the time to treat for your first root flush. When your summer vegetative shoot flush is stopped elongating and the leaves are hardening, that's when you treat your fall root flush, okay? So I thank you for your attention and let's all think big fruit for next year.